Hey guys, Jim Rose from RPM Dynamics here. In this video, we're going to go over the show editor on the new Midas HD96. It works a lot like the show editor on Pro Series. It's just a little more intuitive and a little more powerful than the one that you are used to on the Pro Series consoles. Right now, we are in the show manager page of the console. If we jump into the show editor, you'll see these rows of boxes that are here. I can zoom in to get closer. These boxes give you locations that you want to su uh, supply some show editing, I guess you'd call it, on the, on the console. Right now, I have two scenes in this, sh in this show. I have a, a scene one and a master scene. And if you look, there's nothing in any of these boxes. Nothing there, nothing there. I can, if I select on master, this will select everything as an input channel. If I go to auxes, this will select everything as an aux. Matrices, masters, VCAs, there's all kinds of options in here. I can do it on a per scene or in the master scene basis, or I can do it everywhere. And in the things that I want to create a scope on or a parameter noticing change on here, I can do it on everything in it or I can do on single items. If I go to if I go to a single selection, I can grab a channel option, I can grab mute, so I can grab patching, I can grab an insert, I can grab sends. And when you grab these items in here that you want to set a scope around or a parameter item, you have a parameter list which tells you which features are being affected by these scopes or these parameter settings. Or I can go to multiple selection and I can grab multiple things on those parameters. Uh, say we could just go to all here, which is everything. Right now you'll see nothing happening here, but if we go into our show, our automation here, we go to our master scene, what we're going to do is we're going to move a bunch of faders. We move a bunch of faders, we're going to store this, we're going to go to the master scene, we're going to store this to the master scene. Now what we've done by moving these faders We've changed something from the initial state of nothing in this show. So this show editor is aware that something just happened in the master scene, that there was a change from nothing. So if we go back into our show editor, and we go to our master scene, and we look at parameters, you'll see the lines that are shown up told us that we made a change from nothing into our parameter list here. Say we go back into our automation page and we drop these ones back down and now we go into scene one and we store, we'll say scene two, we store these to scene, when we jumped into scene two, all of the changes we had made in scene one as a parameter change show up available in this list. This is just on input. So as you make any changes, it's easy to see that there was a parameter change from nothing on channels one to 14, and there were parameter changes on scene two from your master scene when we made the other fader moves here. If we move these ones down and we were to restore these into scene one, scene one, store to current scene, you can see well in scene two as we jump to scene one, when I stored to scene two, this added these as another change I've made. You can see I haven't moved this fader in scene two yet, so that's why this box is still blank here. Along with parameter changes that we can set up in this, we can also do recall and score, store scope. So if we wanted to, say, do a store scope that you can't overwrite your master scene on your inputs, once you build that, if you, for some reason, didn't want that to change, we could go to the master scene, we could select this master button, which selects all channels, we could go to store scope, and we could go set store scope, and this will lock every channel. If we zoom out, you'll see every input channel is set that you can't overwrite the settings that are in your master scene. If you want to set recall scopes for scenes, whether it be everything as I've got all or certain items, we could say in scene one, we want to set a, a recall scope for these four items so that these can't change. We can go to recall scope. We can say We'll get out of all those masters. We'll go to scene one and we'll go 
set recall scope. So now we have set the recall scope on every channel on scene one. Now we can get rid of all these and now we can pick certain channels and we can remove the recall scope from just those channels. So we have an option and we can do this on inputs, auxes, matrices, masters, VCAs, pop groups, anything we want we can set into this console so that we have recall scopes, store scopes, or parameter changes throughout this console. If you want to do a parameter change, we could go into here and we could say, we're going to go to parameters, and if we want to take the master parameter of all, we can do a copy of that, and we can actually dump that setting into another scene. So everything on channel one, on my master scene, I just copied to uh, channel one on scene one. It's really fast, it's intuitive. The zoom out's tough to see, but it just shows you all of your channels, but it's easy to tell where changes have been made. This is the basic overview of the show editor on the new HD96. Again, this is just an early version of software on a pre-release console, so the final version of this may change between now and launch, but this just gives you an idea how this is just a more powerful version of the show editor on the HD96 versus the version that was in the Pro Series that was out before.